This week on Tech Stuff Tuesday, we're going to look at subwoofer cooling methods. We've got a few different subs that we're going to look at, and I'm going to explain how they work. We're going to look at the benefits and potential disadvantages of all of those different methods on those subs. We're going to start with the Ermagerd V2. This is one of our subs. This one happens to be a prototype, so it doesn't have logos on it, but otherwise, uh, from what you can see, this is physically the same as what a production unit was. On this motor, it is completely open at the bottom, and you can see that the coil comes out of the bottom there, so we have free-flowing air everywhere around on the bottom. But that's not the reason uh, why this is going to cool as well as it does. You might also notice this goes from the basket directly to the motor. We don't have anything in between there, no spacers, no venting, anything like that. The cone is going to move up and down, and the spiders right here is what's going to actually move the air down in the gap. So we have the pole, then the coil, and that is sitting inside this gap. Air is going to get moved from the spider. It's going to move it past the coil and out the bottom. It can also pull air in. So when this goes on the upward stroke, it is going to pull air in a very small amount. So most of our air is going to be pushed out. The recirculation is there. The air moving across the coil is going to dissipate any of the heat that's being generated from the coil. We have fresh air coming in and out, so the only air circulation might happen from in the enclosure, or if it's inverted, it would always be fresh air. In addition to this method, we also have pole venting down here in the bottom. The purpose of this is going to be to relieve pressure from under the dust cap, but it will also aid in circulating air from the top. There is a gap between the coil and the pole, though it be very small, Air does travel in between the former and the pole, so that is going to be an exchange of air, in turn making it cooler. There is a potential for heat building up, which can affect the backside of the coil. So there isn't any direct real exchange there, but from the backside it's still getting cool air across it, aiding in the cooling of the coil. In this example, we have something quite a bit different. We do have a vent between the top plate and the basket. The basket does not have any venting, uh, as we saw in the last example. We're both pulling air in and pushing air out from here, but it's actually mostly pulling air in. And all of that that we are expelling is coming out through the bottom here. So you've got a pull vent, just like on the other one, that's going to take pressure off the dust cap as well as circulate some heat that's accumulating up here. But we also have gap venting. And the gap venting is gonna be the biggest thing in this particular example. We're bringing air in here and as the spider is moving up and down, it's going to help exchange that air. There's an appropriate amount of air on this gap vent, so we can have some velocity. It's going to bring that air in, and it's going to push that air out. You generally don't really suck in too much air through these gap vents. Uh, you do get a little bit, but very, very little. So again, in this example, all of the air that's being built up in the motor, right behind the magnets, uh, there's a void, and all that air is heating up as a result of the coil generating heat. We're pulling air in and we're exchanging that air out the bottom here. The biggest factor with all of these cooling methods is going to be the exchange of air. We don't want stale, stagnant air accumulating. The whole idea is to bring air that is cooler in and blow out the hotter air. In this example, we have a low baller 12 prototype. So everything on this is same as production except for a few changes here and there, uh, but the motor design is the same. So we've got very similar to the last method, but we have a basket that has holes and that's going to be our venting. Instead of using a basket that doesn't have any venting and having a spacer to accommodate that venting. So we're pulling air in through the basket here and right out the bottom, just like we did on the last sub. We have gap vents, we have the pole vents, and we're doing basically the same method as the last one, just in a slightly different cosmetic fashion. Again, the whole name of the game here is going to be circulating air. We want to make sure that from here, we can exhaust some if we need to, like uh, if we've got the sub not playing at all, it can still exhaust any heat from the coil here instead of just holding on to it. And then we can cycle it out the bottom from the gap and the pole. If you haven't noticed a trend yet, I'll point it out, we have another prototype. This is a prototype Banhammer 12. And again, it's basically what you would get on the production model, short of the boot, that kind of thing. But on this model, 
we have the same idea of having venting at the basket. We also have gap vents and a pole vent. But where this one is different is we have a huge area here on top of the basket. One question that I have gotten before is why doesn't this have a cooling spacer? A cooling spacer would do absolutely nothing because we have this area. The cooling spacer that you might find on the other subs is there because the basket doesn't have any venting. So you have to get air in and out one way or another. You do that with the spacer, put holes in it, there's your cooling method. So here it would do nothing except for make everything taller, which is going to uh, cause other issues in this instance. But I had mentioned velocity earlier, and velocity is going to be the speed of air that you're gonna get it across. And you can have too little, and you can have too much. And in too much, you'd have a lot of noise, chafing noises, mechanical noises, that kind of thing. Too little, you're not gonna get enough cooling because it's simply not moving air across the coil. In this case, we have got a lot of X-Max. So we have the spider that's moving a lot of air downward, and it does get in the gap here. If you have the gap too small or gap too big, that will affect your airflow. We have done a lot of engineering on this sub, so that's not an issue. We have just the right amount of air moving across the coil, but we're not getting mechanical noises or whistling or anything like that because we don't have a small gap that we're trying to force a ton of air through. So in this route, we can reduce our mechanical noises, but we can still get a lot of cooling. In this case, it works fine, but if it didn't move as much, this whole big opening wouldn't really do a whole lot other than radiating heat after it's been shut off. All the air that's being accumulated from this gap here, we are getting out of the gap vents and the pole vents. So the same story on that. Now these gap vents can generate some noise if you don't have the proper amount, but it's a fine balance of cooling and noise. And maybe noise isn't that big of an issue because in an enclosure, you wouldn't hear it. But if they're inverted, that's the difference in where you might hear that. For this example, if we used a basket like this on say, the YOLO V1 or the Ermagerd V2, we would have a large opening here and a large opening down at the bottom, and it would actually be very difficult to cool the coil. It would only radiate heat. It wouldn't actually actively move air across it to aid in the cooling. So you can have too much cooling from having too much of an open area where there isn't air circulation. There's just stagnant air that's building up. In this example, we have a very old sub. This is around 18, 19 years old. We have a basket that has no venting. We have no venting spacer. We don't have gap vents. All we have is a pull vent. So the amount of cooling that's happening is relying solely on the exchange of air from this point going up through the pole, under the dust cap, and pulling any air from the gap through that center point. So there's not really a direct path and there isn't a whole lot of velocity happening there it's working solely on a small amount of vacuum while it's going up and then pressure when it's pushing back there are instances where the pole itself might be drilled differently or the top plate might be drilled differently to expel that air uh, i have seen that on a few subs in history it's not exceptionally common by industry standard on this sub the power handling would actually be very very poor but that's one of the uh, advances in technology from then till now, cooling methods have gotten much more improved. Now with this Ermagerd V2 motor, uh, one other thing that it's not on the prototype motor but is in the production motor, that is another cooling method. There are some motors that you might see little notches, half circles around this gap, and that is a form of cooling. If you have a very tight gap in here, that will help circulate air, and it does some other things with the performance of the motor that we won't get into, but that is also another method of cooling. The pole itself could have notches or those half moons or something drilled out in various ways to get more air circulation on the backside that could also aid in an instance where you have a very tight gap. In some cases, like the Ermagerd V1 motor, on the inside, this pole is capped off at the top, but there are holes on the inside where it would transfer diagonally Air would go through the gap at the pole, come down, and then go out the back of the motor. In that instance, you can create a lot of velocity, again, moving air across the coil to exhaust it out the back. Now, I know what you're thinking, and it's a question that you were already going to ask in the comments. What about the coil? Well, here we have a coil that goes to this motor, and you might say, what's that coil rated for? The coil isn't rated for any specific power. The reason for that being is it's a combination of the coil itself 
and the motor. That's how you get your thermal power handling. Physical power handling or mechanical is something different. So this coil you might see rated for maybe 5,000 watts. That's how the vendor is selling. It's a 5,000 watt coil. That is not accurate. It should have a temperature rating, not a power rating. It has to be combined with the motor. The motor cooling is just as critical as using a good coil. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, make sure you're subscribed, and hit the notification bell down below so you can get a notification for every new video that we upload. If you have any questions, comment below and I'll answer those as best I can. There's also a link below for our Instagram and Facebook, and you can support these videos on Patreon. The more funding we have, the more cool things we can do in these videos. Make sure you shop emfcaraudio.com for all your Sundown Audio, SBC Audio Control, Excess Power, and EMF Audio products. I'll see you again in another Tech Stuff Tuesday.